So Leland, you were talking a little bit about the whole dynamic of breathing in, breathing out, how that co-write should feel that way, yeah. that ebb and flow. Yeah. Can you unpack that a little bit yeah, more for us? Yeah, totally. Well, I, I, I think that kind of picture, along with what Mark was saying earlier about it being a journey, mm -hmm. is so important. That if you go in with with the idea that you are going in, you're going to hold, you're going to unleash all of your artistry in this <laughs> two and a half hour ride with people um, and, and really go in really self-centered. Sometimes we go into co-writes mm. and we don't realize how self-centered and self-focused we are going in and, and all, you're already losing at yeah. that point. Yeah. You're just setting yourself up for a really big loss yeah. and, and a really hard time of it. But if you go into the room really picturing, you know, you mentioned a journey, but I think if, if you look at it like clay, like a piece of clay in the room, this even if even if it's an idea that you brought, a yeah. chorus idea, you mentioned earlier that, you know, one idea can lead to something else. I, one thing I've noticed, especially recently in the last few years in writing, is that when you're in a room with these other writers, because everyone has different imaginations, different uh, perspective of melody and lyric, that if you if you are the one who's like excited about going on a journey, if you get, I get really pumped about co-writes now because I don't know where we're gonna go. I like I, the, I love the That's unknown. A step I, used of faith. To, I used to be so freaked out by that. I used to go in with, I've got an idea. Yeah, I know what I'm gonna do, and if we deviate from this, it's not what we're supposed. To. And it's like that is the worst way mm -hmm. to go into a co-write. If you go in with the idea of going, look, this actually isn't about me at all, yeah. um, and especially if. Especially if, sorry, it's my pen that I write with every day. Um, <laughs> especially if you're going in um, to write songs for your church. Um, mm -hmm. if, yeah, let's if, talk about that. Yeah, I think, <laughs> great I think the to to. perspective, like, why are you going into this right? That's mm -hmm. also really important. Like, are we writing for our church? If, we're, if I'm writing for my local church and we're going in to write a song, you should approach that not as an artist, on any level. You shouldn't approach yeah. that as like this creative artistic expression. You should approach that as a pastor yeah, and, and so as good. a servant leader. And, yeah. and the problem is that we have, I think, worship pastors who have an artistic calling on their life trying to approach their co-writing process for their church as an artist. Yeah. Wow. And the problem is that artists have individual sounds and individual things they want to say. And it doesn't mean their artistry might not bleed over into sure. the song. Yeah. Your voice is in there. It's going to happen. But if you go in as, a, as a, the idea of I am a worship artist that's going to unleash all my artistry on everyone, that's gonna, <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy and choke the life out of the right. Yeah. Because wow. guess what? All the other three people in the room most likely are pretty artistic too. Yeah. But if you go in with the idea of, look, we're actually pastors. Yeah. We're servant leaders. We are writing a song. We're fat, uh, a buddy of mine, Dustin Smith, said that really what we call corporate worship songs or high worship songs really – really good ones, they're just like weapons. You're just, you're building a yes. weapon yeah. to put Ooh. in the hands yeah. of believers on yes. Sunday morning to wield in the midst of going through all of the hell of life. Right. You know, losing loved ones and going through trials and troubles. We need songs that will fight back against yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And so, and I think that's also important to define the difference between an artistic calling and a, in a worship pastor, yeah. which we, that's for another conversation one day, <laughs> but it's, a, but it's, you can, you Very can, true. um, you can dive into, you, you can have both of those things active in your life at yeah. the same time, but it's understanding the differences between them. Wow. You know, when you're an artist, a Christian artist going in to write a song with some friends, it, there really are no boundaries musically. Yeah. There's not really any boundaries lyrically. The only boundaries are just don't write anything profane right. yeah. Um, yeah. and make sure it's good. But if you're a worship pastor and you're going to write songs for your church there actually are a lot of boundaries theologically you got to yes. make sure you're not saying anything that's that's and you're, you're going in not with a self-artistic focus but you're going in as a pastor mm -hmm. and i think that changes everything and it's changed it sure everything does. for me in my own life well especially if you're going to write something that you can use in a service corporately yeah. yes because there are there are things that it's it's a little bit of a different thought process than writing yeah. from a because you've been an artist yeah. mm -hmm. you know that's that's kind of like there are really no boundaries you write what you want to yes give to the people but when you're writing worship songs I heard someone say this and hope you've heard this and I love this thought but it's like all of the songs that we will ever write potentially this is just a thought are in heaven mm -hmm. because yeah. the real creator is there it's yeah. God he created everything I mean and so if we get into a room with collaborators and we're willing to listen, mm -hmm. could it be that we would hear the song that heaven wants written in that moment? Yeah. 
and just right. bring it to earth and be the first ones to hear it here. That's right. That's so and good. so it's like, uh, I think the thing is, and what the point that you keep saying, because when you talk about the breathing in and breathing out, um, it is the willingness to, to go on that journey during that three or four hour session yeah. that you're in yeah. and not hold it hostage. That's right. But just kind of come into the environment and be willing to say, hey, let's go somewhere. Yes. Because I, I've been this, the guy, like you said earlier, when you walk in, you go, I've got this idea I want to make sure because I feel more secure if I walk in with my mm-hmm. pre-planned idea. <laughs> yes. So, so several weeks ago, um, we were in a Spanish writing retreat session, and so I showed up not knowing how to speak Spanish, uh, writing with people that spoke both Spanish and English. Yeah. Uh, so that was beneficial. At the same time, the conversation in the room was in a language that I didn't comprehend. Mm-hmm. So they were talking about lyrics and ideas. Um, I had a choice. I could stay leaned in. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it was, it definitely was a place where I was not secure in knowing what was going on. Yeah. Um, but I stayed in the moment in the room, and I thought, okay, I'm going to contribute. There's something for me to give. Yeah. Um, and so, it was one of the most enjoyable experiences because I even learned a little bit more about myself in the yeah. room as a writer. Yeah. Um, I contributed in the ways that I could, um, because typically I love lyric. Yeah. That day. I turned into an idea melody guy. There you yeah. go. So it's That's like it. I, I yeah. realized I can't really write a lyric. And now I would throw out a thought, and then they would translate it, and they would say, yeah, that actually that works. Mm-hmm. But I think the thing that, that, that made me think was be adaptable. Yeah. Like adaptability is so crucial in a co-writing situation because if you come in and you're like, this is what I do, this is what I bring, um, you may miss out on a gift or something that God placed yes. in you yes. to be That's used so in that good. room. Yeah. And so, so it's good. like, it's like you know, just That's exactly right. be malleable. That's you know, right. Be, That's it's right. like you, when you talk about the clay a minute yes. ago, Lee, it's like I, I'm looking going, yeah, it's like whatever you throw out needs to be be able to be shaped, but mm. at the same time, you need to be able That's to be right. shaped in the right That's right. That goes along. We were kind of, Leland and I were kind of talking off a camera and we were talking about really so much of success going into co-write has to do with you knowing your identity yeah. oh, going so into true. an environment oh, so and it's like so if true. you reject oh, my idea you're not rejecting me yeah. and so that's I would right. love for you to kind of just show yeah. what you're talking about just that intimate place yes have you well, ever had an idea rejected <laughs> I don't please. yes yes <laughs> okay. plenty okay well I'll say this I, I you said this earlier in conversation off camera that you know, it's. I think it's. You, you mentioned this yes. that I think it's important for us to separate ourselves from the idea. Yeah. That you can. Okay, when somebody's, if the room isn't feeling this idea, they're not. It's not that they're. You know, I don't have to take that personally. Right. I think part of that I mentioned in my own journey. One thing that's kind of helped, I think, help me grow a little more secure in my identity with the Lord. One thing I've noticed is that when I'm really dealing with, either irritability or some form of like I know what I'm doing that <laughs> beginnings of pride yeah. or just big insecurity um, I've noticed I've taken note that in those seasons uh, what was happening is I was I was neglecting to use that gift along with the Lord wow. I think the biggest thing to understand wow. is that the gift of music yeah. or to sing or to play an instrument or to even write songs or to fashion and cre- beginning to create ideas that is actually first something that you do alone with the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that Matthew 6 place, Jesus said, you know, when you pray, when you talk to God, when you pursue Him, you don't, if, because otherwise what ends up happening is the only time you're doing those things is in public with people. Right. And that's a really big problem mm-hmm. because yeah. that, you know, you might not always have the opportunity to co-write with people. You might not always have the opportunity to lead on a platform with people. So if if that place is alive, though, that create a secret history with God that is also musical. Yeah. Mm, create a secret so history with God that is also so creative yes. and imaginative. Yes. Like, um, I'll sit at the piano sometimes at my house and, you know, be playing an idea, and I and I know and I know that in that moment I'm trying to kind of write something, but I'm not just singing. As, I'm just writing a song. I'm like, no, I'm doing this with the Lord right now. Like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm doing this with the Holy Spirit. And I think when you do that, it it helps you kind of grow, and that God can. With love, through the love of God, He can start giving you a more mature perspective mm. of what it even means to co-write, and you yeah. start cherishing the family dynamic of co-writing yes. more than just seeing it from a self-centered yes. perspective. So. so good, I love that. Awesome. 
Um, let's talk a little bit, sh shift in a different direction, talk a little bit of the legal side. Yeah. How do you go into a co-write with maybe, you know, you guys have both written with very well-known writers and um, what does that look like? How do you maintain the relational connection and honor that you have with also honoring each other's maybe, you know, agreements that you have? What does that look like legally yeah. going mm. into a co-write? Well, relationship is always more important than splits. <laughs> so yes. it's like, uh, I, you know, I've, I've always looked at it from this perspective. If, if I walk into the room, uh, I mean, there have been times when I've been asked to edit or tweak someone else's song. Yeah. So that's not an equal split. It's just, it depends on what I'm doing yeah. as a writer. But when you walk into a co-write and, uh, and say there are three people there, uh, I've always, I learned early on that regardless of what happens in the room, it's it's three equal splits. It's just yeah. the way that you treat it, and yeah. um, and you know regardless of yes of who may write what, because the one thing that you never want to be a part of the writing room is a person sitting in there thinking, uh, counting lines. Right. Oh, or, or, yeah, you don't do that. So it's like no, it's it's three of us. We're yeah. we're all in here writing, and um, because who's to say what makes the song better? Uh, in the moment because there might be the person that's in there that really hasn't contributed much yet they throw the one melody out of the one line yeah. so I look and say if we're if we're all in the room and we're getting the song to its completed form we're equal rights and so I, I'll tell you this I, I've never I've never lost relationship over writing a song I won't lose relationships. Have so you, let me ask this, have okay. you had maybe opportunities to and you've chosen, I'm not going to let this <laughs> well, <laughs> burn a bridge? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there have been times where, um, now I've had, I've, I've gotten splits before f after a co-write that were not what I would consider sure. yeah. fair, yeah. like from a publisher where they've said, hey, this is what was turned in, and I'm like, okay, that's not what I experienced, but, you know, yeah. where it's two of us and the individual said, I'm 75, he's 25, and, mm. and I'm like, well, maybe he saw it that way. And I, and I really, I've never been one to push back on that yeah. because, um, now, I'd say this, it did make me question as to whether or not I'd really want to be in that co-write again. Yeah. That's right. Sure. It was like, there was an ethical yeah. thing for me that was like, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I do know what I wrote, mm -hmm. uh, even though I don't count lines. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I do you remember, remember the co-writing situation, and I remember yeah. thinking, wow, that was kind of weird. Um, but I just, I, I've always been of the opinion, and I learned this from the guys that helped mentor me as a young writer, mm -hmm. that no, it's just equal splits of whatever's in the room and don't count lines and yeah. never lose relationship over a co-write. That's um, just the best advice. I just did everything you just said there. I think if I, if I have any, any regrets you know, at all looking back or things that I've, that I've definitely learned from is that early in the writing process I just went in so green I didn't understand yeah. that that side of it yeah. and so my perspective was well if I brought this idea I get more of this thing here yeah. and I I just realized now it's like man as I've grown like every co-write I'm in I, I don't I'm not counting lines I don't yeah. I realize now that I there's no way even if I brought an idea there's no way I was going to get to from point A to point B yeah on my own yeah. without those people in the room and it's, it's a shared right. process um, and yeah you might have those situations where like you said where you somebody sends back something and they are really strong on they feel like they need to have the most of the splits don't let it ruin your relationship yeah. um, I've been in those those positions as well I've it's not worth fighting over Absolutely. I think but what I have taken note and go okay cool cool I know that that if I go to write with that person I need to go in with that perspective that that's probably going right. to be the outcome again. Yeah. So for me, I, I steer clear from rights like that because then you, you have this uh, overarching stress that fills the room and it's just not worth it. Okay. And I'll also say this yeah. much too, there are 100,000 new songs released on all streaming platforms when you put them all together every single day. Every so, single day. Every day. Wow. So every 10 days, there's a million new songs for people to listen wow. to. That's amazing. So, the, so the statistical possibilities that your song mm -hmm. that you are fighting for your 60% on in the co-write <laughs> right. happens to be the one that blows up and goes all over the world yeah. is 
mathematically nearly impossible. Yes. Yes. So go ahead and die to yeah. that with the Lord. Yeah. That's good. And allow God to give you a new definition of success so good. Come on. and a new yeah. definition Amen. of treasure, yeah. which that. is success yeah. is just being obedient. Leland, yeah. you talking about success, you both have experienced uh, this level of success um, just in ministry and, and in writing. What have you done to keep your heart? Because I, I know both of you guys, I love your hearts. It's about ministry. Even though you have, you know, gained this success or notoriety, it's always been about ministry. How do you protect that? Like when you do go into a co-writer or, or you're working with someone you really respect and admire and you're like, man, I just want to, I want to write a hit song. How do you, how do you um, just navigate that yeah. and, and protect your heart? Go ahead. No, go. You do it. <laughs> well, I think I think the thing, you know, I love friendship, you know, and so uh, even if I go into a co-write with people that I don't know, my heart is always to build relationship, to get mm -hmm. to know that person. Uh, it's hard to write with a person unless you know a little bit about their story. So I, I love to always begin a co-write if I don't know the person, if it's a new writer I'm writing with. I yeah. want to know about their family. I want to know about their journey yeah. coming to faith. And then once we kind of cross those bridges, you know, then it's almost like we know that we're part of the same body, the body yeah. of Christ. So it's kind of like there's something that glues us together in that moment. So I, I would say, you know, it's like I always start with the relationship. Relationship, uh, it, it, it melts the walls sometimes that are kind of there in the room because it's just the discomfort. Once you kind of mm -hmm. get to know the person and get to know their story a little bit, it's like there's really no barrier. Yeah. Um, and so I, and I, I mean, I've been in co-writes. My goodness, I've written so much. I've been in co-writes that didn't end. I mean, like we didn't yeah. end up with anything. I mean, <laughs> and, and it was and those, like, those are awesome. Yeah. Like I think it's, yeah. you, there's no, lo you don't lose. No, mm -hmm. you don't lose. You don't lose. There's, there's no, there's no loss in, in a co-write. Even if you, don't come out with any any kind of song or you have the same thing that you came in with and everyone just feels like you're hitting your head against the wall. Yeah. In those moments, I'm like, let's just go for coffee. Let's just go have lunch <laughs> and laugh and let's hang out. Fun. And right. you just build better relationship with those people. I think, you know, you mentioned conversation just now at the beginning of a write and, and you're asking about, you know, what's some of the things that I feel like have kept you grounded over the years, even in the midst of seeming public success. Yeah. I think... Um, one thing for me is that in those conversations with people and those rights and yeah. even with especially with artists or with mm -hmm. writers that I really admire that have written amazing songs and have a laundry list of just yeah. a, this a list as long as my arm of just incredible songs that have changed the world. When I've been in rooms of those artists, one thing I've realized is that they're just normal people. Yeah. They're regular people and they're going through life just like I am. Absolutely. And if you hear them share their story enough, you realize, man, uh, a number one song on some chart somewhere and uh, or, a, or a number one radio single or a song getting sung it, none of that stuff yeah. it I know it sounds so cliche but it's just so true yeah. none of it satisfies you no. it's an it's a void if, if that's what you're going after right. um, you know maybe you have the less than a thousand spin sign on your Spotify account right now yeah. right and and you're your next goal is okay. I want to get over. I want to remove that symbol from my Spotify. I got to get more than a thousand spins, so it doesn't have less than a thousand spins on Spotify. And then once you get that, it's going to be well. Wait until, wait until I get a hundred thousand yeah, spins. Right. And then it's once you get, it's, it's an endless it's yeah. void that you'll never be able to fill. That only the love of God can fill. And your identity has to be strong in the Lord. You know, um, yeah. That's just the one thing I've realized is that uh, the Lord has to redefine our definition of success. It has to be God's definition of That's success, good. which is just obedience. When God yeah. commands a tree to be a tree, the tree is just being a tree. It doesn't know how to be anything else. Yes. It's not trying to be. It's just being what who God created it to be. Yeah. And if, if you have this passion for music, this passion for writing and creating ideas, uh, just be that yeah. because that's who, who God created you to be. Be uniquely yourself and resound with the Lord. Uh, and so I'll be doing that until I'm I'm old, you know, I can't play guitar and can't sing. I'm going to keep doing that. And, and no, that, I mean, the thing that I think about is, yeah, I'm more experienced as a writer. It doesn't mean that when I was a young writer, I didn't have anything to contribute. Yeah. I contributed in different ways then. Yeah. Um, but, but the thing is, 
you know, I, I heard Pastor Tim say this, you, you may be a young writer and you may be thinking, well, while I'm young, I really don't have anything to contribute. Well, that's a lie of the enemy mm -hmm. because the enemy will never tell you that you're ready when, you, when you're young. He'll always tell you you're too young. Right. When you're older, uh, the lie from the enemy becomes, and I know this now, is you're out of touch with what's current. Right. You can't, your, yeah. your melodies are old or your, or your lyric thoughts are old. That's a lie of the enemy too. Yeah, it is. You know what? It's like we all have something to contribute, right. so show up. And, and, and don't listen to that voice because that voice is not of God because God qualifies you and God says, be in the room. And, yeah. and the thing is, I do know more information now because I've written for a long time. But I'm always amazed with the young writers that come in with this energy and these ideas and these melodies. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, an incredible thing. And so I would say to established writers, always encourage the young writers. Yes. You know, we need fathers as writers yes. that stir up the gifts and sons and daughters and mothers too hope yeah. um, but but we do we need that on both both ends of the spectrum you got to have the ones that have the knowledge and the years of experience that bring along the younger writers mm -hmm. um, because we're holding and handling something that's very precious when you think of all the people that yeah. sing out a song to God that was written by some writer yes. or several writers in a small room and think about the journey of that song. It's an amazing thing. And so yeah. uh, we don't ever count yourself out. Like yes. don't ever consider yeah. that you can't. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to, because so, I want to, I think Leland may have some information on this too. Um, so you walk out of a co-write and then the song you think in that session that day is for the most part there. Yet you get out of the co-write and then one of the writers takes it and just keeps shaping the song. Um, I think it's crucial that whoever is a part of the co-write stays a part of the co-write still. Yeah. Like, because I've been in situations where a writer will take a song and they'll take it home yeah. and they'll start massaging that thing in their room and then the next thing you know it's like it has very little left of what <laughs> happened in the room. Song. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I know as a writer there are times when I walk away from a co-write and I'm like, man, I really wish this chorus was different. I don't mm -hmm. think we got it in the room. I think it's crucial that you always involve, involve the, the writers. co writers. Yeah. Like it may, it takes more work to do that, especially if you don't live in the same city. Yeah. But technology allows us to do that because it's crucial. Because I, I know that there are a lot of young writers that they step into a room, they write, yes. and then they walk out of the room, and then they have these great ideas and they keep shaping it. Um, well, it's just it's it's kind of dishonoring, it's to, dishonoring. to not to not include that group. I think it's okay to take the idea home and and have some fresh thoughts Absolutely. on it. And actually, uh, I can't remember which movie I was watching. It's, to, it's totally like, it's either Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. It's one of those two. <laughs> uh, and I can't remember. Which but it's either Gandalf or, uh, or the wizard. But one of them said that time is the great thickener of things. And that is just, that's true when it comes to yeah. co-writing. I've learned yeah. that over the years that that as time passes yeah. uh, after a write with people, it starts revealing things about yeah. the song that you didn't yeah. see in the room. And that's totally, that's a really normal part of co-writing. Yeah. But just like you said, make sure you include those ones in because whether you know it or not, what it communicates to everyone when you blaze a trail and turn it into something that it was is that, I got it now, thank you guys, I don't need your help, yeah. you know, and it's it's pretty dishonoring. <laughs> I've unfortunately done that, but not really, I wasn't trying it and have bad intentions when yeah. I was doing that just kind of immature I didn't really know that that's what it was communicating to people yeah. Yeah. so but as I've gotten older I've realized that okay yeah that, that's what that's communicating make sure you involve everybody in that process and and usually those other two or three people have had the same thing happening to them all week sure. they've been yeah. thinking of ideas about it and how it could yeah. be different so yeah. and I think and I think it's just a it like once again it's about relationship and and it's like and I've done it too as a young writer especially being an artist and I was writing for a for him album I'm, I'm like I wrote this with them but we've got to I've got to fix this yeah. yeah and I look back now and I'm like man I excluded some co-writers yeah uh, and finishing the song just because of time but I yeah. think but I think it is important that when you start something in a room try to stay in communication and just yeah. just as a courtesy because and I say that because there's so many writers that write with people and they leave that setting and they it's a different town, a different city, right. and there's distance there. But I just would encourage young writers, always carry people along with you yeah. on the completion process of a song that were in the room. Yeah. It's a courtesy, but it's also 
it's you never know you might end up with something even better. Yeah. So good. Love that.